Well, I'm here with Laura Veers. Hi, Laura. Hi, Chad. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. And so we're here to talk about your latest release, mm -hmm. which is a 10th anniversary LP edition of The Triumphs and Travails of Orphan May. Yeah. So let's take a look at it. All right. This is the, the new record, the new old record. I recorded this in January of 2000, or no, in July of 2000. And it came out in January 2001. Okay. Produced by Tucker Martin, the first record we made together. Uh -huh. And ten songs that I think still really hold up over time. It's a it's a cool album. It's it's pretty experimental. We were listening to it recently, thinking like maybe we should put that out on vinyl. It's worth it. It's pretty cool. It has yeah. some some surprises in it, although it's pretty rooted in like the folk tradition more than my more current work. I think is. Yeah. But I, I like this album. It was the artwork's done by an old friend, Britta Johnson, who does really cool video work in Seattle. And um, and I remember um, there was another songwriter named Aiko Shimada who mm -hmm. lived in Seattle, and she still does. And she had made a record with Tucker, and I was asking her because she was a friend who I met at an open mic, like, like, who should I make an album with? She's like, Tucker Martin, he's the best at what he does. And I was like, really? So I was intrigued, and then. Um, was quite nervous actually to meet him and to make this record because I had made a self-released self-titled debut the year before but it was just a three hour process with this producer guy in a big fancy studio it was very impersonal and I mean the guy was really nice to do it he didn't even charge me but it was just very quick so this is your second record Technically the second one, I, but I don't reprint the self-titled one because I don't like it. Right. I think it's a little bit naive or, I don't know, like kind of cliched lyrically and just immature. Like my voice sounds terrible and it's pretty derivative, so I don't really feel very proud of that one, but I do feel proud of this one and I think it largely has to do with Tucker's production and, you know, him helping me choose the songs and like get a good performance because I had never really done a good performance in the studio before this. and. You can hear though, like when you hear it, I think you can hear there's like a tentativeness to my voice or nervousness underneath, mm -hmm. um, a sort of fragility that I don't feel is there. I mean, I know that my voice has that kind of feeling overall, but I was worried about it. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to make a studio album. I'd never done that before. Right. And it, along the same lines, Alex Guy, who used to go by Liz, and plays on this record on the song Blue Ink. She's in my touring band now, and she's a great musician and very accomplished viola player, and she has her own band and everything. But he told, Tucker told me that after she came in to do some overdubs, she asked him, so how much do I pay you? <laughs> I mean, so that's what we're talking about. Like, we just hadn't done anything like this before. So right. She didn't know that you don't have to pay to play on a record. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I didn't understand that at first, but yeah, that is, <laughs> yeah. that's funny. <laughs> it was like when I, at that same time, I got accepted to Bumbershoot, mm -hmm. and um, the guy called me up, he's like, it's a $50 fee, is that okay? And I was like, you mean I have to pay you $50? And I was certainly thinking I would, but no, they would pay me $50, which seemed like a huge sum at the time. Yeah, so you were really green. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I really was. Well, can you show us the the, the, inside? the yeah. inside of the record? So it comes with a free download of the whole album, and it also has a B-side track that we had um, we uncovered from the session tapes recently. Mm -hmm. We recorded it to two-inch analog tape and dug around and found out that uh, there was a cool song that never made the record. So you can get that as a free download if you buy the record. But mm -hmm. here's the download sheet, and then this is the lyric sheet. And um, then we have very cool red vinyl in here, which I, I think looks awesome. Wow. wow. Ooh. Look at that. Glisten. Nice looking red vinyl. <laughs> so I'm really glad to be just honoring 10 years of making records with Tucker and our friends, like Avon Kang plays on this record. Mm -hmm. He's an amazing viola player that has had a really big presence on all my records. and. Um, Danny Barnes plays on here, and a few other great musicians who I still am friends with. So it's just a nice beginning to, to what turned into like a lot of long relationships with musicians and Tucker as a producer. 
And this is the second release on the Raven Marching Band imprint. Yes. Raven Marching Band Records. Mm -hmm. Which is your own imprint. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I started it in 1999, or actually, probably I started it right with this album, because the other one, like I said, the first one I wasn't that pleased with, but mm -hmm. this one I was like, I really want someone to hear this, I think it's really good, and I couldn't find a record label to put it out, so I decided to start my own label, Raven Marching Band, which is the name of one of the songs on this record. Right. Number nine, which is a, a thought that came to me, it's rather cliche, but it came to me in the middle of the night. Just like, Raven Marching Band, that sounds cool, right down. And it's a cool song. It's, it is a cool song. A, an experimental song. Yeah, it is. It's a real left field type of ending it to is. it that kind of reminds me of the Beatles. So oh, good. Thank what you. What you were saying about experimental definitely resonates with me, at least. So. Good. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool, too, that you've almost come full circle releasing your own records again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's On the kinda... same label name. And <clears throat> uh, this is the newest one. July Flame, Black Vinyl, artwork by Carson Ellis, and, um, and this one actually was inspired by this one. So really? We, yeah. We wanted to go back in time when we made July Flame um, um. to kind of remember like this feeling, which is very sparse yeah. and quite quite song song based like you could play a lot of most of these songs with yeah. a guitar and a voice and it would come off okay yeah and I think I strayed from that I mean not that having more lush band arra arrangements is lesser but there are certain songs in my catalog like galaxies for example that are pretty popular but I can't play them live it just doesn't work because it's not a strong enough song on its own they really need like that meow, meow, mm -hmm, keyboard mm -hmm. squiggle and we never had that keyboard we, 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 bring oh. it <laughs> like, we never get that sound and people were always like slightly disappointed and now I don't even bother playing it but I just didn't want to kind of struggle with that feeling anymore on stage and I also just really love sparse music and when I first got into writing songs at this era, I was really into the country blues writers like um, Mississippi John Hurt and Elizabeth Cotton, and they continue to be really inspirational to me. And so you can hear the foundations of that style of country blues playing on this, and then also mimicking in my with maybe a little a bit more of my own flavor on this. Yeah, I think I think there's less of the blues coming yeah. through on July yeah. Flame, but yeah. because it's it's strong on. on uh, or for me. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And it's an it's a neat juxtaposition against some of the other textures that you have going on. Like mm -hmm. like you said, your voice. It's uh, uh, one writer likened it to Suzanne Vega, who isn't known for being a diva singer or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of goes well with that music. Right. And then there's also the surprise of some, like, a, a beat on mm -hmm. one song. Yeah, John Henry Lives, which was uh, adapted from the Mississippi John Hurt song called Spike Driver's Blues. Right. That song, John Henry Lives on here, has a disco beat on it. It's a very modern take. Yeah. And it still sounds fresh, even though it's 10 years old, it yeah. still sounds like like nothing you really hear. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, and T Tucker gets the kudos for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, thanks for sharing, Laura. You're welcome, Chad. It's exciting. I hope that uh, people pick this up and, and enjoy it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.